Before we get into the various breathing methods used in Chinese martial arts and Qigong, I'm going to go over some fundamental uh, concepts about respiration and muscles and organs and body parts that are involved in it. I'm not a doctor, coach, or health professional, so check out the references at the end for yourself. So respiration or the act of breathing is primarily driven by the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is a piece of uh, thin skeletal muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. And it basically consists of two dome-like structures. So there's like a left dome and a right dome. And the right dome is a little bit larger uh, and that's thought to be due to the presence of the liver. Uh, also shown here on this image, uh, what's called the pulmonary pleura, and this is a um, kind of like a connective tissue that surrounds the lungs themselves and um, encases it. And so the outer layer of this uh, pleura is referred to as the uh, parietal pleura, and the inner layer of it is the uh, visceral pleura. Also, we see here in this image the pericardium, which is the sac or other piece of kind of connective tissue that the um, encases the heart. And this directly connects to the diaphragm. Both the pulmonary pleura and the pericardium connect to the diaphragm. So when the diaphragm contracts, um, it pulls on these structures as well. So as I show in this image, the uh, red curve line shows the position of the diaphragm uh, during exhalation or when the, when the uh, lungs are empty. Um, so that you see it pushes up, which decreases the volume in the thoracic cavity and thus pushes air out. And then when it contracts, shown by this purple line below, it cr increases volume in the thoracic cavity pulling air in so it works like uh, a pair of bellows when you increase the volume pulling the handles apart sucks air in and when you decrease the volume pushing the handles together the air goes out here's some additional detail details that will come into play um, later uh, about the diaphragm so I've shown here on the far left image the diaphragm in its place with respect to the lungs, pulmonary pleura, and the pericardium. Uh, what I haven't shown in this image is the uh, remaining ribs and the diaphragm attached to what's called the costal cartilage of the lower uh, six ribs, or ribs seven through twelve, and um, to the ribs themselves. So if you remember, uh, if you know anything about anatomy, the last two ribs are floating ribs and do not have costal cartilage which connects it to the sternum. Then we have the pulmonary pleura and pericardium which I've already mentioned uh, connected to the uh, diaphragm and the pericardium itself connects to the central tendon which is the tendinous part of the diaphragm in the center of it, the center part of the dome structure. So connects to the xiphoid process, which is that lower triangular piece of cartilage that's at the bottom of your sternum there. And then also the lumbar vertebrae uh, L1 through L3. There's a couple important features I want to uh, point out here on the image on the right. Uh, there's the central tendon, as I mentioned, the tendinous part of the diaphragm. So if you notice other muscles, you have a muscle belly and then which goes to a tendon which typically connects to a bone here the tendinous part connects to other uh, uh, connective tissues as I mentioned before the pericardium and pulmonary pleura also I want to point out what's called the uh, medial arcuate ligament and this is an arch spanning from uh, there we go uh, L1 to the uh, transverse what's called the transverse process the little uh, piece of bone that sticks out from the vertebrae across there and this little arch is where the psoas muscles 
travels through and the fascia of the diaphragm and fascia of the psoas becomes conti is continuous here at this point so we have one sheet covering both structures here and then we'll point out the lateral arcuate ligament which connects the uh, 12th rib to the L1 and this is where the quadratus lumborum travels through. Or all this information can be found in Gray's Anatomy for Students. Uh, if you're interested in anatomy or learning anything more, check out that book. And if you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, uh, hit the like button, share it, and uh, drop a comment below. Let me know.